He's going to show you how to make an acorn. Chris Lapine. Oh, name tags. Who has got the name tag on? Oh, Ron. Come on, dig. Anybody else? Keith. Uh, you know. I've lost my, my name tag. And, and I, I bought a ticket, but no, I memorized the ticket. So if anybody is this guy is September, I'll vote as the name tag. Wait, you want to throw up that Google or page and show it up? Um, I don't profess to have this you know, this method down. I, I picked it up with uh, Gwinnett Wood Turners. There's a gentleman by the name of Ron Brown. He's uh, associated with them. He's, uh, he sells a lot of product. Um, but he also did a demonstration on how to do acorns with very little turning um, and, and basically cheating rather than using, you know, you can use regular tools and hollow things out and make it fit. and. Uh, he sort of did away with that and said, well, you know, I just need a hole, so I'll use a drill bit to do it. I just need a bottom, so I'll use a, a rubber bit to do it. So that's what I'm going to show you today, how I do mine, because I, I tend to do them for the shows that I do, and I'll make 30 or 40 at a time. Um, so you do, you know, 40 tops, get all the tops done, and you go through a process, then you get the bottoms done, then you shape them and so forth. So. Um, and it involves just scrap wood. We all have piles of scrap wood hanging around. So, you know, any shape that's about an inch and a half square will do the job. Um, it's nice to have color differentiation. The top is usually darker than the bottom. So I'll tend to go with a walnut piece for the top um, and then uh, a lighter wood, whatever happens to be white that's hanging around in the shop. And it doesn't really take much to do it, an inch and a half block is plenty, probably an inch and a half by an inch and a half by two, maybe three inches, and you can make an acorn bottom out of it. So, this is the process we use. You start out with the top first. And I'm just going to put a tenon on this so I can turn it around. So this is a piece of scrap um, wood. You can see it's got a, a nice yuck in there that I can't really make it into anything else. I could you know, try and turn it into a, a, a beat up egg, but nonetheless, we'll, uh, we'll use some of it. We'll use this part here. chuck and you can see I've already cutting into this so that should be enough to hold it. important to get it in the chuck because there's a little bit of stress on it. You want that held pretty well. It's fairly close. Yeah, that'll do. The first thing we'll do is we'll flatten the face out. So 
I'm just using a spindle gouge. You could use a bowl gouge. The whole purpose is to, is to just get that edge flat. And the other thing we'll do is we'll put a little dimple in there. We'll have a, yeah, I'll use this guy. So the first sheet, if we want to call it that, this is an inch and a quarter, oh no, that's right, self-ejecting. My lathe doesn't have such fancy stuff. So this is just an inch and a quarter Forstner bit. Don't take anything more than that. This is a little fancier. This is a, a nice little bit for cutting. Um, pick them up at Lee Valley. They lock in so you can have a M2 and I can just pull uh, the, the Forstner bit on and off. And I don't have to worry about putting it into a drill chuck. Normally you, you would mount it into a drill chuck and do, do your Forstner bit. Either way, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. And all I'm going to do is put a, a little dimple. So this is the hood of the acorn. So this is the top that's going to go in. So it's going to sit over. So I want to make sure I've got a nice little dimple in there. When you're cutting, or when you're... Even that's a little fast. But I usually, when I cut uh, with the drill bit, I'll go 250 RPM. That's about it. There's no need to go any faster. You're just going to burn your bit out. Always hold your bit, because it will grab. It is. Yeah, it's just down. I don't need to go very deep, because this is just going to sit on the top of the acorn, so there's no sense going a mile in. You just need a little bit of a thickness to be able to grab onto it. And that's all you'll need this tool for. It's just that. Yeah. Of the thick of this thickness, no. Usually, my my uh, my gauge is like. Um, did I bring my parting tool? I did bring my parting tool. There it is. So I'll make it the thickness of the parting tool. Because then when I make the mating piece, I know parting tool thickness is the perfect length. Because that's what I've done from a depth point of view. So if I tuck that inside, you'll see it's just about a parting tool width. Right in there. So it will, I'll turn it this way. So it will, it will fit just in there and be nice, fairly flat that way. That's not bad. I know what I'm doing. Shit. I think I knew what I did. So, now it doesn't matter how you do it, but you need to get this down um, and start shaping the first part of the... The other part to do. Keep forgetting this. So you end up with a hole sitting in the bottom of this thing. And so that's a telltale sign that you just use the drill to get it out. sitting in there uh, because people when they take a cap off they see it so so I'll just use a scraper It's 
say there. So now you have a little bit of a dimple. You can sand it out if you want, but typically I'll just leave that small dimple there. Yep. The other way to do it is to go in with a, a parting tool and go the depth you want and finish it off with a parting tool and then, just, uh, and then a scraper to scrape it out the same way. So you could do it with a parting tool. This is nice and fast. You can do it instantly. Uh, when you're doing a parting tool, of course, you have to say, well, where is, where is an inch and a quarter? Not an inch and a quarter in a 30-second, but an inch and a quarter. So this makes it really easy to just sit there and say, I know I'm going to consistent feed all the time on here so I know what I'm dealing with now we can take a bowl gouge we can take a spindle gouge now this is going to vibrate a fair amount simply because normally you'd be doing with a shorter piece um, so typically all you want from a length perspective. The top is only going to be about this big, less than an inch. So there's no sense flattening all that out. And what you want to do is you want to decide how thick this area is. So when you look at a, an acorn, it's good. The top is good. It wraps around underneath, right? The, the acorn itself is here. The top comes down and just comes under and kisses that bottom. So you want to emulate that. So I'll take this down a little bit more. 